Hi there, my name's Ruth from ruthnorbury.com and I produce work that looks like this. So I'm going to show you how to do um, one that looks just like that. Well, smaller. Uh -huh. So, um, I don't know if you can see here, I've done the outline stitching. In one of my previous videos, um, it's, what was it called? Um, trans transferring the design, I think it was. Uh, I showed you how to do all of this. Um, so you patch all the pieces together. I'll put a link to the video. Um, I've stitched around the design. I've decided for a change to use my um, electric sewing machine and kind of be really scrappy with it to see how that worked. Because everything else is very scrappy and the stitching was very um, accurate. So we'll just see how we go with that. Now something I often find quite difficult is keeping the white things white. Uh, or the areas of, of very, very pale colour. So I'm going to try before I dye this, painting this, or the white bits, uh, with white ink. I'll put links below to all the things that you know, you'll see in the video. Um, I'm not I'm not sponsored by anybody, just trying to be helpful. So I'll just pop the white paint, over, well the white ink over here, and um, then we'll go from there. You just don't mind getting that. I've uh, travelled many journeys with her, as I'm sure you can see. Sure, I've shaken it. Oh, there we go. Right. So we're hoping to paint this first, and then the um, the dye on top hopefully won't take quite as much because normally I have quite difficulty, as I'm sure you're aware, watching these videos, trying to keep the pale bits pale. So. We shall start by peeling up the pale bits and I'll wait for that to dry and then I will dye the rest of it. Right, I was just testing you there. Uh, you will see the two deliberate mistakes so far of the video. One, I forgot to put the lights on. They're all set up and ready, but I forgot to switch them on. And the second one is, don't forget, you should always put the pale bits over the palest bit of your picture. Don't worry, folks. We have caffeine now. It will all be better soon. So, what we do now is... In the last video I showed you how to sort of sprinkle um, brush on. This is the dye that I use. Um, brush it. It's a powdered dye and I sprinkled it on the previous one onto wet um, fabric. This one I'm going to pour it on. So we make up the colour that, that you'd like. This might take a minute because it's quite tricky. But don't forget these dyes are always much stronger than you think. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of turquoise in tiny tiny bit of leaf green in, even tinier because it's not coming out of the pot, there we go, just a teensy bit, and a teeny 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 bit of Indian ink. Now I have recently discovered that Indian ink is not vegan, and this I find most upsetting because it is something I use a lot. but. We'll have to find an alternative. Well, I'm not going to waste what's there. So, um, yeah, sad but true. So then just try it in a little corner that you're probably going to cover quite dark. See, that's quite sort of, it's not really what I'm after. I want something a bit more like this kind of colour. So we'll put a little bit more of the Indian ink in. So yes, we should be needing to find a new solution for the Indian ink problem. Which is a shame. But there we are. But just, you can always add more of everything, but you can never just, you know, you can't go backwards. So best to be a little cautious. Just dollop loads in it, I never come out quite right. So who is this? That's a nice colour. Yeah, we'll go with that. It doesn't have to be dark, it's just I'm trying to... You know me, everything ends up pretty dark. There is a metal song titled Everything is Black, and it always makes me think of that. So I always end up making everything very, very dark. So I'm going to grab my paintbrush to go around this bit here, but it's just a case of pouring this onto there. Simple. And this is why my cutting mat is messy. You will see. 
So just sort of smoosh it in a bit to the places that it's not smooshing into very nicely. And try and be careful of that. Now you'll see we're probably going to end up with dye left over and that's fine. Because we can actually remember this time, because I never do, to dye the ribbon that will be hanging this piece in the end. So it doesn't matter that this is very pale because you want pale sections, you want to add contrast. Now this is something I find quite tricky. I get quite tempted just to slather on the dark colours because I like yucky colours, but I have to remember to start off with pale colours, otherwise there's no focal point, there's no nothing to look at. You know, this this will just be a square if I don't, you know, add um if it's all very dark around it. So there we go. Slap and tom, and we'll get the ribbon. Now this is from, see it's got a bow in it already, I think. I can't remember whether I found this or whether it was around a present. But we shall just dunk it in here. And it will be all nice and ready. Bonk. Ah, except it's almost... <laughs> As you will see, it's almost refusing to take in. Oh no, it is taking in the dye eventually. See, these things happen. You just adapt. Don't panic. There we go. So we'll smoosh that around in there. Might like leave that in there for a little while because it's not um, it's not taking the colour hugely. So we'll see if that changes in a bit. So uh, I will now leave this to dry and be back in a second. There we go. So we're all nice and dry now. Now, remember uh, in the last video I told you that you needed to wait for everything to dry naturally? Well, a little while ago I discovered that that's not actually true. Uh, you can see all the little marks and um, different colours and patterns that have appeared in this just from um, just from drying it with a hairdryer. So um, I discovered this, um, I don't know, a few weeks ago and uh, it's made my life an awful lot easier because you can just dry everything off rather than have it all sitting around waiting for it to to be done. So we want a nice bright area around this light, otherwise it's just a white square in amongst everything else. So I thought we'd start with that. So a bit of nice spray paint, super gloss, it's really not super gloss, it's um, not really super anything but it's um, it comes out quite pale so you don't need as much as you think. No, I mean you need more than you think, sorry I'll get that right in a minute. You need more than you think you would. So just spray it with the area in question. You see, that's a good spray and almost nothing has come out of it. So don't be afraid. And don't forget to open the windows, of course. Oh, it comes out nicely on your finger, it would seem. It doesn't seem to come out terribly well on the fabric. It's always my way. I've always got grubby fingers. I'm actually quite clean today. You just run out of propellant. Ah, oh, that's fun. Okay, well that was the plan, was to put white around there. So we'll we'll go with something else and be covered in paint. So that's much more me, even if that's not kind of come out quite as I wanted. But we'll go with it. It'll work. Right, okay. Well, while I ponder how we're going to do that now without the spray paint, which we'll come up with a way, um, I'm going to add in the texture into the back because I often find, as I said to you before, that it can feel a bit paralysing as to what to do with it. So if you kind of start by putting some texture on and, for want of a better word, messing things up a little bit, it stops it feeling quite so, um, I don't know, like you don't want to mess it up. You've, you've already started, you've got going. So these are some archival links. Um, see, this is why my fingers are always funny colours. We'll see if this colour comes out as it's... I want them to be... 
kind of a suggestion of bricks but not kind of pop it in your face like yeah like that perfect color yeah excuse the state of my fingers but that spray paint has colored my fingers even if it hasn't colored the fabric hey ho must be one of those days So just little hints and suggestions. Like that. There we go. Might do a little bit the other side. Just a few, not a lot. There we go. I might put a couple up here. Just put an empty space up here. There we go. And now my faithful text stamp, as you can see, is somewhat well used. Well, like that is too. So same again with this. It's just a case of adding a little bit of a little bit of something, a little bit of texture, just to stop it being so flat. Because this is quite textured fabric, you can afford to go with something quite dark because. Um, also, I don't think your stamp pad is in the first flesh of youth, so um, I'm not sure as much comes out as it should do. So we can put it over there, just make sure it's not over the, the white bits, or the <coughs> supposed to be white bits anyway. If it comes out, it comes out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not the end of the world. It's just texture. It's not, you're not supposed to be able to read every word of this. Just little bits of more things going. Whoops, Daisy, going on in the background. Put a bit of it here. Bring it up there. A bit over the door. There we go. So that's just some little bit of um, extra texture. Right. So I want the dark, the outside edges to be quite dark. So I'm going to get the old trusty Indian ink out, and this really will be very, very black, but I'd like that quite sort of strong contrast um, between this, which will eventually be pale, and um, the outsides. So I'm just going to paint around the edges with the trusty Indian ink, and as you'll see, it is very, very black. Again, back to the song, everything is black. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know that they usually end up quite dark. Just kind of fade it in, blend it in. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is not a painting. This is not watercolour. This is a scratchy, scrabbly. Scruffy kind of piece of work. I don't mean scruffy. I just mean textured. There we go. And we'll just wait for that to dry. So it's got a quite a sort of dark, creepy sort of kind of vibe going on because it's so dark. So I'm, uh, we shall wait for it to dry. Right. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we need to do a little bit of definition around the doorway because it's just, whoops, I've got everything stuck to it. It's just a sort of blue blob at the moment. So we shall make a little bit of, um, add in more black, ah, all around here to, um, and do some of these little fiddly bits. Yeah, to make this look much more like a doorway and less than a kind of a blue blob. So we get trusty um, Indian ink here again. I'm going to sit down for this one, so excuse me if I um, wander off occasionally. I should try and keep everything where it's supposed to be, but my eyesight isn't good enough to do it from back there. So, do a little bit of colour. 
colour and to get a bit of shading in here. There we go, so I've added a little bit of dark around the edge of the, um, the door itself and some shading on the wooden panels inside. So it just makes it look a little bit more obvious that it's a door. So um, we'll wait for that to dry and then start on the next bit. Right, now you'll be able to see one of the problems I have living with five cats. One of them is coming to help me. So I've discovered a way that I can get round the spray paint issue over here. I was going to use, excuse me squeaky, um, this chiffon but it just just doesn't work it just doesn't add enough contrast in there come on madam let's go away shall we but uh, it just like I say it just doesn't sort of quite doesn't do the job so we're going to go back with this the white ink and we're going to just add more um, kind of scratchy textures to the to the white coming out of here and hopefully that will do the job nicely. So again I'm going to sit down again because my eyesight isn't that great so we shall be um, hopefully not covering it all up too much. So back to the white ink and hope Squeaky doesn't come back and land in it which is distinctly possible. So I'm just going to put a bit on the end of my finger I'm going to rub it in here to start just to get the excess off and then very very gently So it picks up all those nice textures. I'm going to put my there we go, paintbrush away. This also needs something for the door to sort of sit on. I want a better word. It's sort of um, it's floating at the moment. So we need to give it a sort of ground to sit on. a bit more deliberate. So I think we're at a point now where um, I'm going to, as it were, decorate this. So we've got all the kind of background painting and things done. So adding bits of embroidery, beads, whatever it is that takes your fancy, whatever makes it, makes it work for you. Um, so I'll be back when I've done all of that and then I'll explain what I did. There we go. And I think this piece is complete. So all I've done is added a bit of scrim, this stuff here, which I think is something to do with the building trade, but I'm not quite sure exactly what it does. And I've torn it, so oops, let me move that out of the way for you so you can see it. So it's all straggly, and I've laid some down here and some over the top here. And then I've just couched down some of this, what do they call it, eyelash yarn or something, fuzzy stuff, um, to make this little bit of foliage here. So um, I'm going to tidy it up, just chop off any of these little bright sections, that, your little threads that aren't supposed to be there, or 
you know maybe put a little bit of paint onto here and there and um there we are it's complete so um i hope you've enjoyed the video um please feel free to pop over to uh, ruthnorbury.com to see other pieces that look like this and uh, thank you very much for watching all the um ingredients i was going to say should be in the um in the description down below so thank you very much for watching <laughs>